All right, the Middle East's century-long battle rages on with rocket fire erupting just last week. This time, a rocket from the Hamas-controlled uh, Gaza Strip was launched into southern Israel. Fox and Friends weekend co-host Pete Hegseth went to the area to see just what the Israeli Defense Force deals with on a daily basis as they fight to keep their country safe from terrorism. He joins us live now. You just got back yesterday. Pete, we saw a little clip of the video, and the, I mean, those tunnels look so small and frightening. Well, they are, but they're used to try to infiltrate sovereign Israeli soil for radical Islamic terrorists to kill as many civilians as they can. That's part of the reason we were on the ground. I, I just got back, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. from a four-day tour of Israel, which was sponsored by the National Council of Young Israel and its Vice President Joe Frager. And while I was there, I was able to break away from looking at holy sites in Jerusalem and look at the, the, the umbrella of terror that the, that the Israeli people face and how the IDF is taking it on. Take a look. So here we are, uh, just uh, roughly 700 meters from the Gaza border, inside a tunnel. It's not just a tunnel, it's a terror tunnel. Hamas takes a lot part of its budget to build this kind of structure and to build a military force. Money they could be using for their people for schools and hospitals and otherwise are going into something like this. Yes. It's the only purpose for us to do massive killing inside Israel on a surprise time. And so every day, it's part of your job to find more terror tunnels. We have a good technology, but in the end, you need to discover less from one meter. This is what you need to discover. 15 or 20 meters inside the ground. From October to January, we found just in the last three months, three tunnels. You're finding them right now as Hamas continues to dig uh, under the Gaza Strip into the into the Israeli population. Yeah. I want to get a sense of what it's like to fight in a tunnel like this, because you, in the infantry, you're usually outside in different conflicts, you're underground, but this is a whole nother level. It's a physical, psychological challenge to fight inside uh, tunnels like that. I'm cramping up and I'm sore already, and we've been in here for, what, two minutes? Uh, just imagine the, the, the difficulty of fighting in a tunnel like this, but also the, the ideological dedication of, a, of a, a radical Islamist enemy that's willing to spend months and months and months and months and months underground, picking away at the soil, putting in steel, putting in lights, pumping in air, just so that they can kill innocent civilians. They use their own civilian population as a shield for a military target. This is the, the double crime. This is one crime. The second crime, they all the time shoot and want to kill a civilian uh, population of Israel. And we have conscious that we do the best to save our life and their life to achieve the military goals of the war. Ultimately, when it comes down to it, what's the difference between the way you know the Israeli Defense Forces fight and, and the radical Islamist enemies that you face? Uh, in the end, we come here to protect our civilian, to protect our uh, way of life. We are in the town of Stayrot, just a stone's throw away from the Gaza Strip, protected by an Iron Dome battery. You've got civilian population, you've got privately owned farms, kibbutzes here, and then you've got a massive population controlled by a terror organization Absolutely. Uh, seeking to rain terror on this group. That's your job, is to make sure they don't do that. Exactly. That's our job, that's our challenge, that's why we're here. We are the only system that can protect them, mm -hmm. okay? And no other system can do what we do. Our main mission is to intercept uh, rockets that are launched uh, on a daily basis towards Israel. It happened right now, it could happen in an hour, it could happen tomorrow. It happened just yesterday. What does it mean for you to look at a city like that and realize your responsibility is to protect them? Well, imagine having a responsibility for the lives of almost uh, half a million people. And if you don't react quickly enough in seconds, then you might uh, hear in the news that a house was hit, an army base was hit, you have a soldier killed, a mother that just, I don't know, lost her child. So guys, that pack is just in the south of Israel. Same thing going on in the north with ISIS in Syria and Iran attacking up there as well. So multiple fronts for Israel wow. these days. In, in, in the Gaza Strip, it's, it's obviously a problem with the tunnels. Uh, the White House decides to move the embassy into Jerusalem. Does that exacerbate this problem in the future? Do you think that'll inspire them to commit more attacks? No, I actually think it clarifies. So I spent okay. a lot of time in Jerusalem. That was already known. The Israel is the, right. Jerusalem is the eternal and undivided capital of Jerusalem. Everyone knew that. It sort of puts that aside. Now we can talk about the real issues 
these Islamists want Israel wiped off the map. They right. don't want to negotiate right. the status of Jerusalem. So it's important to have clarity on these issues as well. Pete, wow, good work. Thank you yeah, for bringing that to us. Cool.